for love course and we're building with remix React's got a fresh coat of paint and the team's sick Michael, Ryan, Chance, can see does It's like React router but with fancier mods I got my loaders and actions and now I'm ready to catch Whether client or server, no need to code from scratch Mash out a quick fix and push the patch You'll be yelling out next, it's time for a rematch So what about the data behind the scenes? You know it's gotta be green with hilarious memes Yo it's super base, DX the common theme Shipping faster than Google but with a fraction of the team Auth got it sorted, so easy you'll applaud it And when the data changes your back and we'll go report it in real time I'll tell you it's a beast, gotta see it to believe it So let's get released, peace All right, I think we actually lost one person throughout the playing <laughs> of that video. <laughs> we had a viewer and they were just, nah, not dealing with All this. Right. Not this early. Oh, he's back. Or they, they are back, we should say. Hello, Welcome everyone. Back to the stream. Happy Good morning or evening. Friday. Yeah. So that's that's it, right? Like in the US, it's actually not Friday yet. Ah, um, uh, yeah. So we're very sorry for you, but Rebecca Plack is coming for y'all uh, <laughs> soon enough. But yeah, we're hanging out here. Um, so John and Alistair are both in pretty close to each other, right? Like uh, actually, like a th stone throw away, sort of. Yeah, similar... we're actually in the same in the same city of. So so we're oh, both yeah. in Australia, but we're both in Melbourne in australia which is very exciting victoria Lovely. yeah half an hour drive that's yeah. all <laughs> all right so maybe you if can you're lucky hang out. <laughs> if you're lucky in the middle away, of the night it might might be a bit longer than half an hour yeah. actually if you have that uh that super loop or uh what's that thing elon elon is building i think it was super loop yeah <laughs> i'll take anything elon's building i could we could have a rocket between the two areas of melbourne that's fine that sounds Maybe good. one of those magnet trains would be awesome. Get some maglev. And then, so I'm I'm actually in Singapore, so it is it is a bit early for me, but I'm hoping it to be to shape up to be a nice day because I'm hoping to to get out on the water later. Um, oh. And it's been it's been like thunderstorming and pissing rain. Um, so hopefully that stops. Uh, so oh, Adam, hi, Adam. Woo. He says, hey, we Adam. love Superbase. Hey, Adam. Woo, we love you. Uh, <laughs> and we think Superbase nice. is okay. I yeah, guess. Superbase. Pretty, pr pretty good. Pretty good. So, um, yeah. So, happy Friday if you're in the future like we are. Uh, I think what's actually funny about this uh, is... Um, so, Alistair, we actually met in one of these settings. We met on uh, some... Was it our advent calendar live stream stuff? Yeah, um, in 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 the very comments of of this stream, <laughs> I yeah. think it was the uh, yeah advent calendar. I believe we jokingly you were helping us out with um, some SQL that we probably should have been able to write on our own that we couldn't <laughs> write, and we jokingly said you just passed the uh, the technical challenge. You should come work at Superbase, and you took us up on it, and now you work yep. at Superbase. <laughs> I've, I've made it to the other side of the curtain. Yeah. Here so anyone who's, yeah. who's out there listening, that's, that's if we get stuck today, that's how you get a job. <laughs> exactly. So uh, just go to tune in the live streams, come help out, and then uh, join the team. That's 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 how we, how we do it. And yeah, most um, people give away like swag codes for t-shirts and stuff. We give away jobs. Have your coupon well, code for a job. <laughs> I mean, not not a coupon code, but. A YouTube comment for a job. That's that's a trade offer. <laughs> um, anyway, Superbase rocks. Uh, thanks, uh, Enrique. And do I say that correctly? Oh yeah, that's nice as well because now for um, uh, like South America, it is not too bad of a of a of a time zone. Uh, oh, Brian, Brian's got it. He's trading the comments. He's broken the formula. Have a job, that's, Brian. That's what, that's what he wants <laughs> Welcome to do. aboard. <laughs> Maybe this stream hey. could just be your onboarding for, for the next hour or so. I feel like I've seen I've seen Brian's... Uh, is that New Zealand? That looks like Hobbiton. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I think you could be onto yeah. something there. There mm. we are. 
All right. I'm. I mean, I'm all for having more people in this time zone. I, I think this is a fantastic time zone. We're living in the future, and um, let's actually, yeah, let's get cracking. Should we? Should we put uh, John to the stream? Uh, and then we probably should maybe do something like this. What's better, this? Actually, we can no. even show. Let's do the this. The live page. Uh, uh, uh. Yes. So this is our new partner gallery that we've just launched. You may have seen it if you've been watching them Twitters. Um, and so we now have this wonderful page which lets you supercharge your Superbase instance um, by adding integrations. And so we've got um, some different tools that you can click together with your Superbase instance. Um, and then over here on the left, we've got experts. And so we've got some expert partners um, and uh, dev agencies that um, are very experienced with building with Superbase. And so they can help you with all kinds of stuff. But the cool thing is, this whole page is also an open source project. So this is something that Alistair has been working on, um, building out this partner gallery example in our Superbase community repo. Uh, do you want to tell us about all the cool stuff it does? Sure. It's uh, it's it's kind of a, a nice Superbase kind of highlight, I'd say, because it, it, it covers uh, quite a few cool features in there, um, namely Postgres full text search, We've got some next image going with uh, Superbase storage and then also sending uh, some emails from our new Superbase functions, which uh, if you were following the last launch week, you would have seen that was quite a big launch, I think. Everyone was uh, quite quite pleased to see them finally drop. Um, yeah, people have been yeah. asking for functions for, for quite a while. I mean, and <laughs> so we thought, well, why not? just give you instead of just giving you functions why not give you functions at the edge so we have functions super base functions deployed with Zeno at the edge so um yeah globally available very close to all of your users uh which is very cool and i think because the launch week was like falling on april 1st we we're actually thinking to <laughs> sort of make it a joke where it's like functions on the edgiest edge literally running on your computer <laughs> but yeah, uh put them on your toaster we, on your fridge <laughs> yeah <laughs> we actually thought that you know if we ship this on april 1st people just think we actually didn't bother with functions and <laughs> we did uh so we made it the, the thursday but yeah i think with the the partner gallery um you know as kind of anything we do at superbase we do it open open source and so, um, you know, it really is just a great example of, you know, how we use Superbase uh, at Superbase um, to build something like the Partner Gallery. And we thought, you know, there is more and more um, kind of companies out there that probably have a need for a Partner Gallery. And so, you know, why not give you something, some starting point um, for that? And so that's what the Superbase Partner Gallery example is for. And I think actually maybe, what should we do? Should we just, should we just go and set it up locally? Should we? Yeah, yeah. John, you, you're I'm ready way to go. Right there. And the best part about this is that I have not actually uh, set this up yet, and so Alistair is going to be stepping Ooh. us through hopefully a successful. <laughs> <laughs> so <Precious on>. this... <laughs> well i think i was still yesterday or something kind of fixing the stuff uh because one thing to look out for is actually with functions if you go back to um maybe to to the uh, github page uh because functions are written in dino or well they're written in typescript but they're running on the the dino engine um you have to watch out kind of in terms of how you set up your project. So if you look into, uh, maybe scroll up to the files, there's like a, if you're working with VS Code, it has a pretty um, neat thing called uh, code workspaces. So if you if you use the the, the partner gallery example.code, if you click on that, um, the the bottom, second bo bottom, uh, yeah. The second bottom? file. Second, second file bottom. from the bottom. <laughs> yes. I get you. <laughs> Sorry, it's uh, it's early for me. So um, so you can set up your um, code workspaces, and so we're kind of what I like to do is I set up a project root, which basically is kind of catching all the the files at the root. Um, so things like the README, and you know, kind of kind of want to edit them. Then I have my Next.js app, which is just in the in the app 
uh, subfolder. And then I have my supervised functions. And when you create your supervised functions with the CLI, uh, what actually happens is it is it creates a supervised folder. Uh, yeah, so this is the app subfolder, which is just your standard uh, Next.js app. And then you have uh, the Superbase folder, which has the functions folder. And so that's another code workspace. Um, and so actually, yeah, if you let's clone it down and maybe open it up in VS Code and kind of see sort of how that um, how that plays out. Sure. Give me one second, because I realized I didn't actually have the Superbase CLI installed. Um, oh. I needed to well, you run... can show how to install the CLI. Let's let's go yeah. from scratch. I needed to install a yeah, really little, from scratch. Uh, a secret little thing that I wasn't allowed to have in, on screen. But uh, yeah, if we say npm install uh, superbase actually... dash g, oh, that works. Right. Don't you want to use uh, brew? Give it a go. All right, so we're gonna brew. I'm actually not sure. Does it work with npm? I don't think so. Uh, and you actually have to do tap slash superbase. No, superbase. Oh, yeah. What was it? Brew. Okay, maybe tap. just go to the docs. <laughs> Brew install superbase slash tap slash superbase. Superbase, there you go. that's it. Is that in? Um, oh, it's not in here, is it? Is no, that... it's not in there. So you, uh, yeah. All right, give it to me again. So we're doing Brew. Inst install. Brew, tap. Brew install. Superbase super slash tap slash superbase. I think it's, oh, it's, really pointing. A job. <laughs> <laughs> it's pointing to we should we should be having beers tap. It's like oh uh, yeah. Have some beers. Yeah. But I guess yep. it's Next a bit time. early now. It's a bit early. Next Just time. to give some context, we are thinking of um of maybe running this as more of a regular thing, um, but making it more like a happy hour thing for us. And so doing it in the it's it's the morning on Friday at the moment, but we're thinking of doing it in the afternoon on Friday. Mm. Uh, and maybe having some beers and having some chilled out coding times. Um, Tim Tams. But yeah, let us know if uh if that's something that you would be keen for or whether 10 a.m is the only time that you would be able to join and whether it would be not uh convenient for your time zone if it was like three well, yeah, maybe like... you can let us actually know where you're physically dialing in from, kind of the, yeah. the time zone it is for you, and then we can sort of figure that out. Also, Brian has a question here. Can you set up Gitpot for that project to make it easy to contribute to? Has any? Ha, I actually haven't used Gitpot. It's uh, it like before? one of those co online code editors, I think, like uh, StackBlitz uh... or... Um... What are the other ones? Code Sandbox, but I think it integrates nicely with the uh, Git, hence the name. But maybe, uh, maybe we could probably set up code like the built-in GitHub code workspaces for it as well, because um, that'd be pretty cool if you could just start running. I it. mean, GitHub code workspaces is enabled for anything, right? You just press the oh, yeah. the, 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 the dot, the, the, the full the full I dot. forgot. <laughs> yeah. So in 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 GitHub, just press. Oh, yeah. Oh. I can actually show you just over here. Yeah, yeah. if we're on a um, on this GitHub repo, we can... This is a, a trick I learned from Thor on one of our streams. If I have this open and I just press full stop... Is it full stop? Full Maybe. stop. Or do I need to be should in be a... full stop. Uh, no, yeah, I think you should just be on the... Maybe it's your Australian keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> Needs to be comma on those Australian keyboards. No, well, uh, fun, fun, uh, okay. Sure. It did work sure. at one point, but yeah, if you press full stop on your screen, it should Wait, open it. it not... in... oh, oh, no, it works for me. me. There you go. Yeah, yeah, just yeah me. it works for me as well. I That's mean, you fine. can also just replace the github.com with .dev. So instead of com, you do dev, and then really? it's the same. Yeah, That's the but URL all at the top. fancy tricks. How do you know all this yeah. magic? Oh, you're not logged in. That's the, that's the issue. Oh. <sighs> You had a baby, John, and that's the problem. You've you've been you've been locked everything out. Has decided everything decided if if you take a little bit of time off work, you, you don't do any work anymore. You don't you don't do any dev work. We'll just kick you out of everything. Oh, okay, um, but yeah, Brian says all the environmental requirements. Yes, uh, we are planting trees um, as well for the environment. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that uh, environment. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I get it. I think. Um, GitHub doesn't allow you to run everything and like the end and kind of yeah yeah that's fair. 
Good one. I think ones Brian had about. one more question as well there about oh, Millie yeah? Search, which is pretty cool. Oh. Um, so yeah, uh, if you want to, you'll you'll see the kind of uh, full text search we've got going after we set it up. We'll uh, demo that for you, hopefully. But it depends on how you're using Millie Search. So Postgres has the kind of uh, what's the best way to describe it? Like their type is you complete search as well, which isn't full text search. So we're kind of showing the keyword search here today. Um, but if you are using Millie search for that kind of autocomplete experience, um, check out Postgres trigra trigrams, TGRM, I think is the extension. It's pretty cool as well. Um, they, yeah, <laughs> Postgres has something for everything, <laughs> mm, which is why we love it. It is, it is a wild beast. Yes, that is correct. Awesome. So now that I've um, actually authenticated with GitHub, now that we're on a um, any GitHub repo, any anytime you have this open, now if you press full stop, uh, it will open this up in a nice little uh, integrated VS Code uh, code editor in the browser, which is very cool. And you can do things like yeah, global search over all of the files for I don't know how much you mean. There's an index dot something. Okay, search doesn't work. There we go. No, yeah, you just get a click to generate the index or something, yeah. All right, okay. But yeah, super cool. Um, super yeah, cool. well, we could just do this in the browser. But let's just do it. Well, in the yeah, no, I think because we want to use the CLI and kind of things like that. Um, All right, cool. so do we want to create a Next.js project? I think we just want to clone that we'll one down, probably. Clone, clone down, that one down. Yeah. Easy. All right. I mean, that's why we created way. it. Come on, <laughs> oh, John. Yeah. Uh, you want to do yeah. everything from scratch again? <laughs> John wants to actually type all the lines of code himself. Doesn't yeah. feel like it's. Uh... Yeah. yeah, what's the first line? Uh, okay, and then what's, yeah. the, what's the second line? <laughs> it's a good way. It's a good way to um, pair program. Uh, this would be the partner gallery example. And so now I guess. if I open this up in VS Code, and I'll even make it a nice little window for us over here. Yeah, I think so to I get think the now, yeah, Paul's going to talk about the code workspace, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. So what you want to do is basically say instead of uh, I think what you did was code full full stop. Is that what you did yeah. to open it up? So what you want to do is code, and then the partner gallery example code work dot code workspace. So just do p tap. That's it. Auto complete. And then you hit enter, and then it opens up um, the code workspace which means that you can see you have a couple different workspaces. Ah. Um, and the great thing with that is because for Dino, um, you have some, if you go to the Superbase functions, uh, there is a VS Code um, settings JSON, which enables oh, the Dino linting and stuff. Um, but you need the Dino, do you have the Dino uh, VS Code extension installed? I don't believe I do. So let's install so that as well. Maybe just go to the marketplace. Oh, no. I think just VS Code on the right. Oh, there's. Yeah. That's it. Oh, that's one way of doing it. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's got their magic little ways to get places. So this is our, uh, or the, yeah. the Dino land, Dino extension, yeah. a language a client for Dino. That's let's it. Let's do it. Give that an install. Couldn't uh, I think we're there. also working on. Um, oh, do you have Dino installed locally? Yeah, you'll need, you'll need Dino before you get the extension. This is great is, because we're actually yeah. going through everything you need. Love it. Totally. All right. So How do we get think, Dino installed locally? I think if you Google install <laughs> Dino. Let me Google that for you. <laughs> Dino.land install. Uh, brew install Dino. How easy is that? Oh, oh so easy, easy. easy. I can even come here and copy it and not oh, even need look to at that. It. Even easier. Oh. All right. We're installing Dino. We should make that a challenge, basically. Coding without actually co like ever hitting anything other than Command C and Command V. That could be a nice <laughs> challenge. Yeah. I was thinking we should start the stream by giving John a brand new laptop every time. So we've got to, <laughs> you know, go through every step each time. Yeah. Just just so, let me have a baby every just before every stream and uh, everything <laughs> will reset. Nothing will work and we'll get to go through configuring my entire laptop. Just at the end of every like, day, oh. Alistair comes up to, to John's house, collects the laptop, 
reformats <laughs> it and then hands it, it back in the, it morning. in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. What a what a torturous, oh. torturous life. Ah, okay. Um, so Brian Brian is doing another pitch there for um Gitpot. Uh where does Brian work? Does he work at Gitpot? <laughs> <laughs> I think I can take a wild guess. Don't waste time setting things up. But I mean I mean no, we're not wasting time. We're having fun. But yeah, yeah. you're right. It's like 25 minutes in and we haven't <laughs> done anything. But That's look at everything good... that we're learning. Yeah, we are learning. But um, can you... I wonder if on Gitpod you can use the Superbase CLI. Do they like give you a container or something where you can install stuff? Oh, uh... yeah, that's a good question, Brian. That's that's one for you. <laughs> can, can you run the Superbase CLI within Gitpod? That'd be nice. <laughs> And now it looks like uh, the Australian internet or something is letting us down. Oh, it's homebrew. Um, uh, is it? Oh, no, uh, look at that. Look at oh, all the Brian says doing. yes. Okay. Brian Brian says yes. Lovely. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Shiva has just shouted out that uh, Warp is great uh, because Warp is fantastic. So this is the um, the... Uh, terminal that I'm using here and it's just yeah it's been awesome I used to have this really long iterm config that made everything uh you know the way that I wanted it and then I yeah. installed warp and I was like oh, I'm gonna have to start from the start going through all this stuff again but I haven't changed anything about the config because it's just they just got it right it's just awesome. properly set up oh that's yeah. nice that's all right nice. and we're here we can stop stalling so Sweet. now if we go uh back here yeah Maybe. and i think now it might just work now might just work um how about we just or maybe maybe we yeah just rest yeah i think that's the way to go do that yeah yeah and so i think if you click on the settings json file uh the vs code it actually shows you yeah enable true so now that line is Whoa. is on and so actually if you open up the the function uh, that's in the contact notification. Um, you can see, I think if you hover, say over, yeah. So uh, it might be downloading think, the uh, imports still. Yeah, you need to cache the import. So if you hover over that and then click on quick fix. Um, so Dino is a bit different in how it works. So you don't do like an NPM install or anything or pull the packages down, but Dino just kind of pulls in all of that basically from, is it via CDN? I guess something like that. Uh, or basically just where the code is. And so if you just click on cache, um, that, and then VS code pulls down the code as well as like all the TypeScript definitions. And so, um, it means that. Yeah, you don't do kind of this npm install, um, but you kind of want to cache sort of the uh, the libraries locally. And then, oh, it's interesting. So it's actually given them an error there. Uh, but Fix request... the TypeScript error. No, no, no. Well, that's that's not. <laughs> what, what, Technically, what, you did that? fix the TypeScript yeah. error. I, did. So you... I mean, it's not red anymore. <laughs> But I mean, the the type should be should be injected now from from Dino. That's a good question. Oh, uh, maybe it is. Oh, well. uh, yeah, there you yeah, go. You see, just took a second. All right. Just give it give it a moment, okay? <laughs> Don't just jump straight to colon any anytime you see red. <laughs> just give it a second. <laughs> Patience. Okay, cool. And so, yeah, maybe now. Should we go through the README and kind of set it up and see if we can run it run it locally? Yeah, let's do uh, it. Yeah, well, it will be a test of how good the README is, really. If John can just follow <laughs> it through and uh, and it all goes yeah. to plan, we'll, we'll uh, take that as a win. <laughs> Don't have such high hopes. All right, so we've created... Oh, we haven't created a new Superbase project, so let's do that. Let's go. Actually, you can use maybe the live one that is for the partner gallery. We just yeah. need to make sure we don't expose any partner contacts. But I think but should if we you just go... go through? How about we just go through actually doing well, it? We can... Well, yeah, it says, or use an existing it. one. <laughs> it, it does, but um, we can show uh, us, we can creating vote. the tables and stuff as well. Okay, let's, we let's do, do that. 
and right. uh, and then we can actually do we can use the CLI to create the schema. Cool. So I'm going to create a new project, and this one is going to be called uh, Partner Gallery Example. Example. And I need myself a strong password. Give me one second. Yeah, it's it's probably better that we don't uh, try and hijack the emails of the live version. Otherwise, we'll be spamming our sales yeah, team with <laughs> a bunch of and emails. We can, always, we can show everything on the stream and then just um, you know delete it later. Uh, I'm going to choose Sydney just so that it's as fast as possible for the stream uh, and nice and close to me. Yeah, for All me of and you, John. Probably most of us that are awake at this point. Yeah. Well, I mean, the US is, is still awake just in the past. Ah, uh, they haven't reached us yet. The stream hasn't gone live. <laughs> the stream is um, live. While we I wait that for that. Off. They're in the past. How could they be at now if they're in the past? That doesn't yeah, make Yeah, let's sense. actually do it locally with the CLI. Um, right. So, John. Yes. We probably should add the local development CLI instructions. You can do a PR after this. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. Great. if you go um, to your project, so you're in your workspace. Yep. And what you can actually say is uh, Superbase migrations new, I think, is dash. And then a name. Uh, I think you, oh, migration. OK, so yeah. Uh, you you need to give it a name as well. Um, so let's just say call it init, maybe because we're initializing. So it's like the the initial. Just say init, yeah. Um, and then yeah, if you go to your code, so you can see now that within the superbase uh, in the project root actually, uh, in the superbase folder, we now have a migrations Ooh. folder. And you can take the schema.sql, so the stuff that's um, in the schema SQL file below. Uh, it's in oh, the right, same yeah. project root. Yeah. Uh, schema.sql. Oh, so yeah. So you can take all of that, put it in that mig initial migration. Uh, and so basically, this is now your, your SQL. And then we can apply that to. Um, I think it was DB reset, Superbase DB reset. Um, we have we actually... Do we need to link the project? Uh, no, but because this is local development, but we actually need to start Superbase locally. But let's see if uh, John has Docker installed. <laughs> <laughs> so Superbase start. <laughs> Try that. Superbase start? Just start. <laughs> ah. no. Do you have Docker desktop at all? I can. can. Can we? Yeah, we could probably just go straight to the live one though, because it's it's blank at the yeah. moment. Yeah. But maybe probably let's still download Docker. That it's built <laughs> and up and running. But maybe we should download Docker. And then we can switch to the the live stuff first. Um, On Win yep, <laughs> Windows. <laughs> sure, I also yeah. think Docker's like a few gigs. Uh, are you on an M1? Yeah. Yeah, then let's go with that. Sweet. And yeah, in the meantime, maybe we follow the, 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 the actual um, readme instructions. All sorry, right. sorry, sorry, folks. I'm, I yeah, just have a target to, to hit on the CLI, you know? That's, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, I want to see those CLI installs go up. So everyone just run brew, super base, yeah. tap. We should just uh, do some some preparation on my end before before that. So, all right, we create a new super base project and we want to run the schema.sql file. Um, so if we come back to that schema.sql file um, and we copy all of this stuff, we can just come to our super base instance um, and over here on the left, we have an SQL editor. So this gives us um, direct access to um, the Postgres instance that's running for our Superbase database. And so we can say we want to run a new query and we can just dump in 
this whole massive chunk of stuff that's conveniently been written for us. Um, and then when we click run, this is going to uh, execute all of these statements on our database. Oof. And you can see there is an error. <laughs> Damn, unlucky. <laughs> Damn, so close. And it's on semicolon, which is a very, very helpful uh, error for us as well yeah, to that's, find uh, where it is. Do you okay, want to do I it in two can, parts? Just we can like, step um, through the SQL. Yeah. yeah. Just do it one by one, and then Alistair explains what it actually does. Yeah, that's, that's probably a good cool. idea, yeah. So, yeah, if you, if you want to just delete it, and we'll go statement by statement. So maybe, yeah, the yeah. partner type first. Um, so essentially you'll see in this demo, we have actually two different pages. Uh, one is for the, um, integrations and one is for the experts. So it's kind of like, I don't know how you want to categorize them. You could probably add your own categories. Um, yeah, so you can see John's doing an excellent job of uh, showing us there, but there are technical integrations that, um, have a code kind of. Yeah, well, integration is the word, isn't it? And then on the experts page, those are some people who can actually um, have super base expertise and can help you out. So that's essentially what that enum is saying. We're just categorizing between the two. So if we move on to the partner contacts table, I think was next. Uh, Off the yes. top of my head. Let me move this one over here so we can just swipe between them. So then, yeah, the next one will be this one. So we can create our table um so you so, see we actually use that type there as the second one partner type uh, yeah, um, right. that we cool. just created and then this has all the details for when a user fills out the the form if they want to become a partner on your website um that's where they get sent in um and so if you want to be a partner you can just go to supervisor yeah, com yeah if you want to become a super base partner form. If you scroll on down, there's a form at the bottom that you can fill out. Um, but were you saying, so this is, so would this be where, like, if someone wanted a different field, like if they cared about um, what the person's, um, to, I don't know, hat, last name was, size. for example? Head size. Um, yeah. You want to send them a hat. You want to know yeah, hat size. size. So you want to know all of your partner's hat sizes. Uh, so you would add hat size here as a different column for your table. Is that right? You're absolutely right. That's excellent. Uh, all right. So the next one is we are. We can probably do the next two together. Yeah. The next. Oh, it has the policy yeah. as well. Okay, Maybe yeah. actually remove the, the white space between the altar table. I think we can show. Uh, yeah. So if you just want to open a PR after uh, and just. You can so, open a PR during Thor. You can you just <laughs> should we step the user should we step the viewers through opening a PR as well? We can we can fix our own stuff and, and do do what, our normal watch us do work at work. Superbase. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. uh, what are these two lines doing? So we we essentially don't want anyone to be able to first of all read our, our partners' uh, contacts. If uh, someone submits to be a partner, that should be private information between us and them. But we do want to allow people to create them a, a contact to be become a partner, which is essentially what happens when they submit that form. So when you enable row level security, that's kind of a blanket turn off of all permissions. Um, and then we are creating a policy, which is just an, an allow you can see right at the end, it just says true, which allows uh, all inserts through. So at the end of running these two lines, you'll only be able to insert new rows into the partner context table. Um, and yeah, that's, that's exactly what we want. Cool. Awesome. Um, yeah. If you, if you want to learn more about row level security, I put together a video on the Superbase YouTube channel that Thor can maybe find and dump in the chat. Um, but yeah, row level security is how we do it. Is how we encourage to do authorization at Superbase because it's kind of writing those access policies in the database itself, um, which is, yeah, very powerful. All right. It's super powerful. And uh, what we're doing there is not super, that powerful. We're literally just saying, true, you can go so much further. <laughs> and it's awesome. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, as, it... as, as Alistair mentioned, this just kind of disables everything. So, all insert updates, deletes, uh, selects, the user can't do anything. Um, and then what we're saying is we just want everyone to be able to insert. And so you can write different policies um, to enable those different actions if you want people to be able to read or write data to the database. 
But I think even just locking everything down with like that one statement of enabling the policies is pretty powerful already. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, and we, we do encourage people to do that just by default. Just don't don't forget to do it because I've seen some people think that, oh, because I haven't enabled row level security, you know, security is just on by default, but it's uh, it's the other it way around. It should be, yeah. So th just watch out for that one. Enable row level security on all your tables. There's my public yeah. service announcement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I think, that, yeah, something that people often do is like enable row level security and then like everything's broken. It doesn't work. Um, and so, yeah, I, I suggest you go and watch that video that, that Thor posted in the channel because, um, yeah. yeah, that steps through writing some some pretty cool policies. Um, type it off off the screen. Good yeah. news. I found the extra semicolon. It's right after <gasps> stored. Ah, oh, perfect. Oh, that one there? Mm, yep. All that right. should not be there. That's, I don't know how that got there. Well, maybe I will need to git blame on that one. <laughs> yeah. Do a git history we check. We do it live on the screen. <laughs> since since right. it's open source. <laughs> so this one is creating another table, partners. So what 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 does this table do? So I just get blamed, and let's not get blamed because it was me. <laughs> <laughs> um, this this table is the actual table that backs the um, partners page, well, the integrations page, and the technology. Uh, what do we call them? Experts. Sorry. Um, so this is where you, once you've had a contact come through, you'll probably say, all right, that they look great. We want them as a partner. You'll move them over and uh, type out all their information into this table. Um, one interesting thing of note here is you can see there's a the, the last column is a, is a Postgres generated column, um, which is used for our full text search. So you can okay. see we're kind of combining a bunch of other columns above into one TS vector, which is what's used for Postgres's uh, full text search and setting different um, weights on them with the A, B, C, and D, which is another cool feature of uh, the full text search. We can kind of say how important different things are in the search. So um, hopefully that leads to more relevant results when you're actually firing off search queries. So oh, that will come back in later when we're on the uh, front end side of things, but that's what you need to do on the back end to set things up. That's so cool. So full text search just allows us to search like all of the columns of, of a table, right? So like every, um, so it just gives us everything. So this is a way of... of well, yeah, so it kind of... That, to each we're kind of choosing here which ones we want to search on. So you can see it's title, description, overview, category, and slug. But I really don't care about the slug as much as I do the title. And then it essentially just acts like a where clause where it um, filters through all of the rows. And if that you know word is contained in the ts vector it keeps that row there so yeah it, it, it's it's super powerful i i think um you should probably think of it more like a keyword search than like a and sure. um, that's what i was saying earlier with the the trigrams um with the autocomplete search so yeah think of this as keyword search and if you want um uh autocomplete search reach for tri uh, trigrams i'll probably write a guide on that or a blog post or something yeah. Maybe we can, can show see. it actually right now. Like if you go to the partner page and type it in, right? Um, so what you're saying is that, so for example, if you type in Vercel, uh, as you type, it says no partners found. But once you complete it, Vercel, so like if you type the actual word. Yeah. And is that the, the difference between kind of keyword Correct. search and... Keyword search and, and I, I call it autocomplete search. There's probably <laughs> more uh, um, technically correct names, but yeah, this is it. it yeah, that, that's kind of the distinction, I think. But if it, John, maybe another example is if you just get rid of that and find a word in one of the descriptions, because you, you, that was what we were doing with combining like react. all of those columns together. Yeah. Maybe just do react. Well, yeah, add the power like that as mm. part of the. Oh, you mean so we get more results? Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh. Okay. Only, is that true? No, it should <laughs> bring it. Oh, it's because React comma. Is that the, the reason why? Uh, I think if it should React handle that comma, for you. Yeah, I, I think it the word strips out in them. those random. Because that, that's essentially what a TS vector is. It, it breaks down words into their simplest 
part so it, it, it removes all like um plurals and and that sort of thing so and then it does the same thing with your input so that's how it's able to match very quickly um, but then it but yeah. means it's not actually working right because if we put in react we should get if you do comma now do a comma interesting Oh, is it capitalization? Oh, right. Sorry, it was just because I wasn't scrolled oh, down enough. Because these are the scroll down. and these okay. are the text. Sorry, right. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't freak me out, Thor. Yeah, <laughs> it's not working. Hard question. It's not working <laughs> right on the stream. He's uh, yeah, fierce. <laughs> okay, sweet. It, it is, is working. working. Sweet. It's working perfectly. Okay, nice. Working as it should. Yeah. <laughs> as we but, yeah, yeah, the only thing is, I guess it would be nice if you type like ver. It would actually come up with um, Vercel, yeah. Um, but I guess that's what you mentioned, where you kind of looking to write the blog post on. I heard Alistair. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, cool. especially for things like I always think uh, of like drop downs as the canonical example when you're you know typing and the results are filtering through. Are there any limits to character length in the fields for search? Not on this example, I think. John, you could probably put in like a really long string and it, it will it will just search for it. <laughs> I think yeah. he maybe means on like the columns that you're searching on. Um, um but I think I think yeah. I don't think I guess the I'm performance actually... gets, but I mean depends like if anyone wants to dig into the math of the vectors, it might actually be not too bad. Also, I, th I think it will re remain like people use this for like the real use case for this is searching like full blog posts or something like big walls yeah. of text because that's when you're entering in full words, right? So I think you'll probably be all right. And especially because um, that TS vector column, we probably, I don't know if we do it in this example, but we should be indexing it um, for nice, fast search results. Um, and once you got an index on it, I think, yeah. You'll get yeah. pretty far. Like, I'll be surprised if you... <laughs> I'll say, "What's your use case?" If you're running into any problems with it, yeah. And then well, maybe to complete the loop, should we look at how we're calling it from the front end? I'm just kind of, you know, thinking maybe we stay on the full text search yeah. for now. Um, Do you mean like in the in the next app? app? If you look oh. at um, uh, <laughs> not, I get you. The code. <laughs> All right. In our next JS app, yeah. um, for or is it a component for search? I think so. Is it in the NAF? It is. Go to the Pages Partners Integrations Index page. I think, uh, or maybe not. I'm I'm just looking now. <laughs> oh, and maybe fire off an, an a, a yarn install or npm install. Yeah, there it is. Um, so we've got a search, That's... and then uh, it's it's just in this use effect here that um, it runs Text through. Search. So it's... oh yeah, yeah. So we we expose on Postgres with a TJS a dot web search method, which essentially, like a lot of the methods in Postgres, writes the difficult SQL for you. Um, oh, sorry, dot text search and then type web search. So there's a few different types available. Um, and we, you can see we're using TSV there, which is what we called our generated column in the SQL. So we're saying, do a text search on that column of type web search, which is web search is what you want to use for um, user input when they're searching like that. And then English, mm -hmm. because that's, that's what we're doing. And that essentially handles all of it for us. And then uh, it's basically like another where clause, but with full text goodness. Nice. That's awesome. All right. Brian, enjoy your pizza. Enjoy your Thanks pizza. Thanks for joining us, Brian. Uh, have a good night and a good Friday ahead. Hope you learned a lot. Um, yeah. And if, I mean, anyone else who's who's watching, you may have uh, picked up that Alistair's pretty good at uh, Postgres and <laughs> database-y stuff, and Thor and I are nodding along <laughs> saying, yeah. Well, Definitely. I, 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 I don't know about that, John. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe not. Now, why do we need the TTS we'll, we'll find out if ignore it here? That's 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 the real mystery. Uh, it's because of um, I'm not including. We could actually fix this if John, if you get rid of that TS ignore, 
And I then, think you need to install. The then we just put any you everywhere, need. right? If we put any, that'll just fix it, yeah. Yeah, that that's that's how you fix it. Just any, all the things. I'm not including, although I probably should be. If you see where we're doing from partner um, uh, partners, the, the partner type um, doesn't include that TS, TS vector vector. column. Gotcha. Even though I think it should, because it 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 might come down. I'm not actually yeah. sure off the top of my head, but. Um, if we include on that partner type right at the end, if you just add TSV string, I think it comes through as a string on on the uh... yeah, and and that that'll uh, that's probably it. Yeah, I'll fix that error. Just in install your dependencies. All right. Um, so can you next, can you install your dependencies, John? <laughs> install my dependencies. Is he just right. ignoring me? <laughs> is, is he, he really doesn't want to install the dependencies. Anything anything for us as a value, Alistair. If you could repeat it, then I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I know how to install dependencies. We can. Oh, apparently I don't. Well, you need to go the to the app uh, sub the app, folder. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We got so the, we've got lots of folders here. The uh, workspaces. Okay. So we need to go into oh, app. App. Yeah. And then this is our next JS app. So now we can install our dependencies in here. That's it. And I feel like anytime we're installing dependencies, we should be just <laughs> listening to. Uh... Here we go again. This is the very water bottle that's featured in the video. Clip. Got my level up course, and we're building with Remix React. Okay, we finished that. <laughs> you want me to just do it? Like oh, no. I oh, yeah. Okay. Good timing. Well, well done, Paul. Yeah, all with out. Remix, React, got a fresh code. Of... Um, so the so now we've installed our dependencies. Do we want to? Do... So now we can check our type errors. We can see yeah. if it fixed it or not. Okay. Well, okay. Jazz. I don't see any red here. Yeah. What's oh, it's actually fixed our, our one up here as well that I wasn't actually yes, going to go yes. through because I thought maybe it would still be red. No. Nope. Nice. Just install your dependencies. Yeah. Listen to Thor. <laughs> Always listen to Thor. His advice is... All right, is... so I think, yeah, we, we've got two two lines of SQL left, right? Uh, yes, I dumped them in and I don't think I ran them yet. So, yeah, so this one is, again, just enabling row-level security for the partners table. Um, and then this one, we are enabling everybody to be able to select. Um, and so this is probably the uh, the row-level policy that you should write if you get frustrated that you're, um, when you enable row-level security, you can't select the columns anymore. If you just enable all for select, um, then people can still read from the database, but it means you're still protecting yourself from someone uh, compromising your data in terms of um, you know writing nonsense to your database tables or changing what's in there. We, right. we can actually, uh, let's let's do something fun here because we can probably add this to the, the PR that we're going to make. But um, instead of true, we actually have a column on our table called approved, which we're not really using for ourselves at Superbase at the moment because all of our partners mm. in the partners table are approved. Ah, but interesting. Let's, let's, uh, let's have it as, yeah, only approved partners will show up. I mean, we're doing it as a filter in the query. At the moment, but yeah, you're right. If we if we wanted to make sure that no one could ever see the whole the whole partner list, then you could do this. Yeah. Yeah, because if we want to shout out this comment from earlier, the best thing about RLS is that no matter how much of a bad programmer I am, the data is still secure. And so this is a great example of where uh, if we put this in a row level policy, it means that we don't need to remember to. Um, to uh, write that exclusion logic in our code. Well, even bad programmers can type true, though. So, not sure how. <laughs> That's true. Really bad programmers can't. Yeah, maybe can't program any any of it. <laughs> uh, all right. So, we now have run all of that SQL, which is great. So, we uh, if we come across to our table editor now. Um, you'll see what, what we've actually been doing is running those queries directly against the database so that we don't need to click around the UI and create this. But we could have just done this throughout um, the Superbase UI by creating these new tables. 
Um, but yeah, if we come over to the table editor, we can see a little bit more of a visual representation of our database. And so you can see that we have our partner contacts and we have our partners and they have all of those rows, uh, sorry, all of those columns um, that were in that .sql file. So if we go back to our wonderful documentation here, we want to update the environment variables, either in Vercel or locally with Superbase URL and a non-key. So uh, is this in our, so this is in our app.env.local mm. file. Uh, so if we cross to our project here um, and we just collapse all these. So in our Next.js app, um, we want to, uh, our .amv.local, we just want to rename this uh, .local. And so this is an example of the environment variables that we actually need here. Just get rid of all of this stuff. Um, so we need our Superbase hostname. We need our next public Superbase URL and our next Superbase anon key. Um, and now all three of these are actually fine for us to show on the stream um, because we've enabled row level security. Um, so these are all public values, which is why we've um, prepended these ones with next underscore public underscore, because um, they are fine for everyone to see. So yeah. if we come across... Yeah, oh, I'll just say as well, the uh, if you're wondering why I've split out the uh, Superbase host name instead of just having the URL value, um, that's actually for next image. So if you just have a quick look in the next.config.js file, um, when you're loading images over through from Superbase storage, you need to uh, allow the Superbase host name in uh, the domains config of next image. Um, so that right. essentially says, yeah, we will want to resize images from this origin. So that's why it's split out into two diff different things. Okay, so this this runs server side as the configuration for your Next.js application when it's actually bundling up your application for hosting. And so we have access to the server here, right? But we don't actually ever want to use that value in our Next.js app. So we're just leaving it as Superbase underscore host name. So it's not that it's actually, I'm, I'm asking. And so it's not that it's actually a secret value. It's just that um, it's not actually required by our Next.js application. So since this yeah. part of it runs server side, um, we don't need to prepend it with next underscore public. Yep, that's right. Awesome. And Thor's just added a link there to uh, Lee's awesome blog about. Um... Oh, right. Yeah, Thor, do you want to do you want to talk about what? Yeah, I think is? it's exactly this use case of next uh, image with. Uh, super base storage so if you kind of want to dig into that a little bit more maybe build like a really beautiful sophisticated image gallery um our friend lee at Vercel has 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 got you covered there yeah he's doing a lot of good good content it's really really nice and i mean Vercel in general are killing it that's uh a really really nice team they are building over there as well so yeah, when we're are you going very to happy to be working for? with them. <laughs> don't leave us. Please don't leave us. No, I wish I wish I had invested in it, but uh, no, I did I not. I saw you on the on the Vercel stream helping them out with some um, cloud infrastructure problem they were having, and I started to get worried. <laughs> it's a callback to earlier for anyone who's joining us now that Alistair got a job with Superbase by uh, <laughs> helping us out on a live stream. Uh, all right, so we want it's, our Superbase. It's... Yeah, the so, new hiring pattern, just live live streams. That's you know, that yeah. we can start a billion dollar startup around hiring people off live open streams. Open live streams. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's cheaper than uh than recruitment, definitely. All right, I'm gonna copy this URL and I'm gonna bring it across to our next underscore public underscore. You can actually uh, just well, uh, do the host name. You don't need to do it in yeah. two places because of the magic of the normal bash. <laughs> Of the what one? If if, if you, if you uh, undo, you'll see uh, it's using some interpolation, uh, and it actually interpolates. So cool! I didn't even know you could do that. That's amazing. <laughs> That's so cool. Yes. So so this is taking the value of Superbase hostname, which we've declared here, and interpolating it, inserting it into this string. So here we're just adding a HTTPS colon slash slash to the front of it to declare this variable. That is so cool. I am definitely. Computers going to pretend that I knew that all along every stream I do from now on. That's 
That's awesome. All well, right, it's, and... it's, it's only half cool because I don't think Vercel runs Bash for their Ian Vivas. So yeah. when we deploy to Vercel, we will have to do it twice. But okay. for lo locally, it saves all of you know 0.1 seconds. So I'm into it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're also going to copy our Anon key here. So make sure that we're taking the Anon key, not the service role. Um, yeah. To If you want to know the difference, the Anon key um, is what we should use for, for everything anytime we're using RLS and we want to know who the user is. Um, and then the service role bypasses all RLS. So we, we only want to use this on very, very special cases. But most of the time, we'd be using the Anon key, which, uh, again, can be completely public. So we can put it in here under our next underscore public underscore superbase underscore anon underscore key and drop that here and there we go we have some environment variables so if we come back here so we've done this step um, and now we want to deploy our superbase edge functions to contact form notifications so we're going to do superbase link project ref i'm going to copy all of this bit now we get to see whether we get to spend a little bit of more oh, more time sorry, playing. You need the... to go back into the root directory. Oh for yeah, this. good call. Oh, so you're in the app. Uh, yeah. uh, we get to see whether we are playing the configure John's laptop game again. Um, mm -hmm. So we want our project ref, which is this uh, value that we've got here. And we get to play the game. Access token oh, yes. not provided. So, so you need to do superbase login. Oh, look at that. Helpful error messages. Oh, don't do this on stream. <laughs> All right. Give me one yeah. sec. But yeah, just to talk you through it, we have special account tokens in from the Superbase dashboard, um, which essentially allows access to your Superbase account. So you want to keep them private as John is doing now. But that will allow you to do all the cool things that you can do with the Superbase CLI connected to your account. Hmm. Like deploying edge functions. Exactly like deploying edge functions. So if we were getting a 404 on the Superbase page. Have you got a dot to... at the end? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's from the. That's from oh, the. Okay. End. The terminal. All right, we're good. In the terminal, you can do command and just click on the link. Yeah, it should, should work. Don't you have that smart warp warp terminal? Warp was trying to be too smart and it didn't make me hold uh -huh. command, um, but it included the full stop that was after it. Oh, uh, okay. Isn't warp, isn't warp, great. Warp, 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 warp. Right. So I've generated a new token, and I've finished my super based login, and now I'll just. Clear that for us and bring it back over here. All right. Uh, and the command that I was running was this project ref one. So I'll just quickly copy this again because I was about to paste and paste the exact thing that I was trying to keep off screen. Hmm. Uh, we want. Nice. Awesome. We like the look um, of that. Success. No message is a good message. Two base secrets set SMTP. Ah, yeah. So this was um, something we were talking about earlier, Alistair. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, essentially just to, well, there's, there's a couple to talk you through. Most of them relate to SMTP, which is for sending emails. Um, so when you submit the uh, contact form, um, we will kick off a super base function, which will call our SMTP, um, or I'm not sure of the right word for SMTP, the protocol push to our SMTP, who knows? Um, so we're essentially just providing some credentials to allow us to send those emails out. Um, the last one, the function secret, uh, I'll come back to. Um, but again, it's another secret which shouldn't be shared with your front end because it's a back end only secret. But yeah, we'll talk about that a bit more once we get to the next step of deploying the function hook, which is going to be renamed to um, async triggers, right, guys? Yeah. Yeah, 
is that has that happened is that happening soon so this one john i th we like any good tv chef i've sent john a, a command earlier which he's not going to show on <laughs> stream right. again um okay. but the examples there are pretty it, it should be i don't think you'll run into too much trouble with setting those yourself because uh for example i'm using postmark uh today which provides all of these in the all, all of the uh, smtp credentials in your account so you can just go over there and copy and paste into the secrets um and then there's an smtp variable called smtp2 which is uh, what we're going to uh, where, where those emails are going to go there's one thing to keep of note and that's that because superbase functions are powered by dino deploy they're blocking uh the usual smtp ports for um normal like customer email to prevent spam which is a good thing but you'll just have to make sure you when you choose your smtp service they provide a port other than the normal um SMTP port. So we recommend either using SES, which uses port 2587, or Postmark, which is 2525. And um, you won't run into any issues then. Awesome. So yeah, I've essentially run off screen what this this big long thing is here. So we're just setting some secrets, um, which, yeah, as Alistair just said, is for our email configuration. Um, so the next thing we're going to run is Superbase Functions Deploy Contact notification. So what this is going to do is if we come back over here, um, collapse all of this stuff in our Superbase functions, we have this contact notification. So this is um, a Dino uh, edge function that we have written. And so all this is doing is uh, deploying that to Dino land. Where is it sending the email to actually, Alistair? Uh, in in the I, example, did you? In the, if John, a... if you copy and paste it directly to me, uh, directly the the command directly, it'll be coming to me. But um, I can just um... share my screen when we get to that point. I've got a nice blank inbox here, so we can see Very the good. emails come in. <laughs> cool. Alistair's on inbox zero on this Friday morning. <laughs> well, I I used a, a, an email that I don't use, so. Uh... Yeah. Very smart. Unfortunately not, but for this demo, let's, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So now Sweet. we can see that our contact notification was deployed um, and we can view um, the, oh, yeah. use the command yeah. click. Let's do that. That's quite nice. I'm just, yeah, I'm going to copy it because otherwise it will open in a different browser to what I'm sharing oh, over here. So I'll do gotcha. this one. It all makes sense now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can send this to warp and have them figure it out. <laughs> so it's just loading up here, but we should be able to test this out with just running our local, because we set yeah. up those ENV vars locally. We can just run npm run dev on Next.js's side and fingers crossed everyone that it'll uh, send us an email. Let's do that. Right, well, should, we, should we do that now? So if we change into our app, so this is our Next.js app and we run npm run dev, should pull in those environment variables. And now if we go to localhost over port 3000, boom. Yeah. We Put don't have any partners, that's right. 3, yeah. So let's fill so, in the form. Yeah, let's fill in the form. So this is exactly what you can do if you are a integration that works with Superbase and you want to become a partner, or if you are an expert with Superbase running a dev agency or something like that that can help people uh, with their Superbase projects, then fill out the form and we'll get in contact. So uh, let's say that we are, I feel like, I feel like yeah. we're probably experts in... Just put yourself in there, mate. Superbase, right? Yeah, oh, John, case, John's consulting maybe, maybe services. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should change this from expert to like, yeah, okay, intermediate, skilled. John, construction Superbase. and consulting. John's hats. <laughs> and we were talking about oh, hats yeah. earlier, weren't we? John's hats. Uh, company size one. <laughs> well, you're 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 four no, now, no? Yeah, you just added added one to the company, right? Oh yeah, true. Um, I'm gonna be the CHO, so the chief hat officer, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, important um, role. Yeah, John at hats. dot com. Um, do we need a real? You phone don't have to no, fill you, that. You, that's uh, optional. Perfect. 
and we my our main time zone main area is australia and i guess singapore now before you send this we we actually have missed a step i've just realized <laughs> um while this will insert into the database we need to call our superbase function when it inserts to the database so ah, i yes. was talking about it earlier and that in my mind that's why i thought we'd done it but we've got one more last step <laughs> So, so is this um, over our it's in answer? the read me? Yep. And these are the the pictures. So oh, it is in the read me. I yeah. thought you just meant you were talking to yourself in your head as to something no, that we need. I, to I, I mentioned the uh, the the function the function hook things earlier, and in my head that I, we'd done it. That that was me doing it in my head. But no, <laughs> we're, we're still awesome. here. Right. So we need to set up a superbase function hook. Um, and so if we come over to database and go to not database. Yeah, yeah, that, it's just yeah, at the bottom. At the bottom. The right oh, no, yeah. Up, up, up. Yeah, right. that's Don't why we need triggers. to name it. <laughs> not, not triggers, hooks, functions. Up, hooks, yeah. function hooks, which are going to be renamed async triggers. Yes. Yeah. Because that's what they do. That's what we're setting up right now. We're setting up an async trigger. So a trigger basically listens to um, a... A, a table in the database and anytime uh, you can subscribe to particular events. So like insert, update, or delete. And when those events occur, we can, uh, we can call uh, with triggers, we can call a Postgres function, which is a function that, um, that we can write in SQL or PL, PG SQL or C or a whole bunch of languages. Um, and so this is a nicer kind of convenient version that we've created, which is kind of like calling a webhook when something changes. So we can subscribe to, um, to those events in the database. So we can do that now. We can say we want to enable hooks for our project and then we want to create a new function hook. Um, does This doesn't need to have a particular name, does it? So we could say um, send email. Is that what it is? Yeah, I, I think I called it contact notification, but it literally does not matter. So yeah. Send email. Uh, and then we can tell it which table we would like to listen to. So this would be our contacts. Is that right? Correct. Yes. And we only want to listen to insert. So we just want to know when, when a new person uh, fills out that form and we insert a new row into that table, we want to do something. And so what we want to do is we want to um, call or make a HTTP request. And so this is going to send a request to a URL. Um, and the type of request that we want to send is going to be a post. And we want to send that to our Dino URL, right? So mm. you probably refer to the image I've got in the docs here because it, it shows you. Um, it's right. in the second image, oh, I yeah. think. And we, we should say as well, when, when the, or maybe just after they get renamed to async hooks, you won't have to um, go and look up the URL here. It'll just, you just click the button. It will show what super base functions you've got there um, and, or edge functions, I should say. And it will do this all for you and uh, even the, function secret stuff, which uh, I'll talk about in a minute. Cool. Awesome. So we need our ref.functions.superbase.co slash contact notification. Is this you can anywhere get it that from we the can... dashboard? Yeah. Try yeah, re right. force refreshing this one. Um, it seems to have gotten stuck somewhere. Oh, yeah. There we are. There you go. So that's oh, it there, look right? at that. That's handy. Boom. So we're going to copy that one across to here. So we're going to make a post request to this URL. And then uh, I didn't have a look at the bottom of this, but I'm assuming everything else just stays as is. No, we have. Yeah, we, we need, need to add some something. headers, which in the right. future will be automatically added. But um, so we right. need the so that's authorization right. header. And then we need is it capital A authorization? Yep. I, I don't can't think click it image. too much. But yeah, no. I wish. Well, you can on a Mac if you download it sometimes, or on an iPhone. I don't know. It never we works. Probably for me. should just put it in text. Actually, no. Yeah. I'm sorry, the name is authorization. Oh, what am I doing? Uh, oh my god! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh, it's gone. <laughs> it's been a long time. We probably um, should uh, save the uh, state or as well. at least it ask if you actually want. Oh to yeah, do a confirm. Yeah, yeah. That would be a very good idea. All right. It's all right. We, we, we're doing it so you really see how it's done. You know, we'll show That's you everything right. twice. That's right. <laughs> I mean, people could have could have left the stream. People, new people could have come onto the stream. They haven't seen yeah, us done do this bit yet. So I mean, <laughs> it's 
it's what we needed to do for sure. Oh, good. You still had that in the clipboard, so it, it was all right. Crisis averted. <laughs> and then uh, you so just need your Anon token again. So this cool. is another security feature we have around uh, edge functions to make sure that you don't get... Well, it, it kind of helps with, I guess, DDoS protection, maybe. Um, if someone doesn't have your Anon token, they can't send a request to your function. So it's just a, a kind of extra level of security. But as Thor said, it's going to be automated for you um, very soon. Cool. And we want one last header for our X function secret. So this one you'll have to show off stream again, probably, because, well, we, we could show it on stream, but we'd have to delete the function real quick. So this was the another environment variable we uh, set in our uh, Superbase secret set. Yeah. Um, and this, essentially what we're doing here, if you look in the uh, function code as well, we can show after you uh, set it. Yeah, that is the right one. <laughs> My bad. Uh, th going. This essentially just makes sure that it's only this particular async uh, trigger that calls the function. So because it's sending an email, we don't want just anyone to be able to call this function and, and start spamming emails to us. Like <laughs> that would be quite annoying. So this essentially just matches the e environment variable that we set when we set all of those SMTP headers and make sure that... Um, it matches the header that comes over from here so we can mm. verify the uh, the request is coming from our own database. I guess an alternative would be to use the, the service role key and then check for the role, but that seems actually more, more difficult. So let's not do that. <laughs> yeah, a again, I'll, I'll keep saying it. It's going to be automated for you. You won't have <laughs> yeah. to think about it. Cool. It's so just looking so, at this image, we just yeah. added the secret here. Um, and then we didn't need any HTTP params, and we've clicked Confirm, um, which then brings us back to this screen where we can see a summary of our uh, function hooks, soon to be called async triggers. Um, and so all this is doing is it's listening to the table partner contacts, which is um, what, uh, what this... Uh, this form, uh, when we fill out this form, this inserts a new row into that table. Um, and so we're listening for new inserts on that table. And anytime a new row is inserted, we go and make a request to this webhook, which is our Dino, uh, our Dino function, our edge function that we've deployed, uh, which is going to send our users an email or send, sorry, send Let's us an it. email. That send we can me an email. Yeah, <laughs> send us an email. Uh, cool. So, you, you can hit submit on that form that you filled out. Still? Yeah, cool. So now step six is just to insert partners into the partner table. Well, sorry, we'll, what did you say? We'll, we'll... Did you say? Did you say something, Thor? Silence. Oh, do you have your local host still open? That's what I asked. Yes. Yes. Nice. Yeah, cool. just hit send now. I reckon. Well, we need some additional details. Oh, you can add some additional details. Uh, and we've got thanks. a message here saying we'll reach out shortly. Very nice. So let's touch see there. if the function was invoked. I guess that is the... That is well, the maybe actually step. see if the data was inserted. Yeah. So, so if we, we can... come back to our Superbase instance and look at our table editor and go to our partner contacts, we can see that there's okay. a new row there. John's hat. Um, yeah. And now we got to check the function. Let's see so if we, we have some to invocations. Function and go invocations. Come on. <laughs> you can do Come it. On. Come on. The suspense. No results. <laughs> try try <laughs> that refresh. Oh, refresh. All right. Oh, what was that? Oh, we got an error. There was a 500 error, I think, in the log. But was that oh, we can... retrieving the lock, or was it our? <laughs> <laughs> Where was the? Well, as you can see, edge function edge functions are experimental until first of August twenty twenty two. So right? let's maybe see logs. Let, we see yeah, look at the logs. Else. Did you get an email, Alistair, by any chance? Uh, I'm, I'm, I did not. I'll be honest. Okay. So how do we and... debug if our trigger ran? Good question. We could One log last... a port ticket with um with Superbase. 
if you just jump over to the metrics page as well metrics and it, it, it will uh... yeah no data to show okay so let's if we go back to the function hooks do we have any let's just make sure it is this is what we want so da, la, la, la. Um, this looks like it says show password. So we'll see whether it looks like it says show password at the end of our uh, function hook. Show password. Um, so da 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 dot functions dot superbase dot co. So should this this should be going to our and it's on on insert. I think that's pretty all right. Yeah. You know. I think there is some tables that we add for if you go to your tables and then check the schema uh, for the function tree. Yeah, there's like a super base fu underscore function schema. Yeah. Cool. Come on. Wonderful it's, Australian it's, internet. It's keeping us in suspense. <laughs> Quite literally. <laughs> Oh man. Oh, that's rough. It is rough. <laughs> we'll just have to edit this stream. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, then cool. So then, super base functions. functions. Yeah. Schema. Schema. And then and hooks, I think. Hooks. So Schema. there is our hook. If you then mm -hmm. click record on, yeah, hooks, and then the last column, there's a little request. What does that take you? Post. So that's the post. Yeah, so that looks okay. Looks good to me. Guess it must be working. <laughs> okay, so... Easy done. No errors. We're done for the so day. So what could it be that... Well, it looked like the function didn't run at all, right? So it's... Yeah, very, very so is it the author, authorization? We have all the things... Um, we passed the bearer, right? The authorization header... Yeah. Um, Should we just try filling it out again? Let's see if we do yes. technology. The good old definition of insanity, isn't it? <laughs> oh, we don't actually need any of this stuff. Cool. All right. And then if we come back here and check our invocations. See, so we did have a log for a 500 that flashed for a moment. Ooh, oh, yeah, there we go. That, that's, we're making progress. It actually called it. There we go. Right. Um, so, can you go to the logs? Or do you want me to scroll down? No. Yeah, it doesn't. I think we don't show. Just go to logs. <laughs> just go to logs. Right. logs. We know we got a 500. Let's see what it says. OK, so I think I actually ran into this very error earlier, and I think it means the secrets didn't get set properly so maybe you mm. can just try running the that set command i sent you again and then you don't even have to redeploy that's one of the nice things about um super base functions is when you set secrets it automatically bumps the version for you so oh. um so maybe actually then you want to deploy the function first and then set the secret second. Sorry, I, I, I messed that up in your ordering in the readme. I, I, no comment. <laughs> Give blame. <laughs> it's all right, though. No, I, I, I do take, because I, I approved that very cool request. So, you know, we, we share in it. You called it out, though, and I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> I did no work on this, so I have nothing. No blame falls on me. I've done nothing wrong. <laughs> so, um, Tyler in chat, uh, the okay. So the um, that's an excellent. It's excellent. actually okay though, I think, because just yeah. we we only called the function hook, soon to be renamed to async triggers. Um, <laughs> contact yeah, yeah we, we only called the function yeah. hook send email right the actual endpoint yeah if we the look at the endpoint end point that it's sending to yeah that's sending to slash contact notification cool. so yeah, good yeah. very good, good um yeah very good suggestion 
So fill out the form one more time, John. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Uh, da, 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 da. Or can I just click send again? I guess it'll I'll just, be... Uh, if you undisable the send button. <laughs> ah, okay. Oh, I need to run you the stop localhost? application again. And CD in that app folder. Okay, oh everyone on stream. Let's, <gasps> fingers crossed. Everyone hold your breath while I slowly fill out this form. Oh, wait, oh, it's still there. It. Oh, I didn't but... save it. It's just pretending. No. <laughs> I'm fostering a cat at the moment, anyway. and... Uh... But he's not excited to be featured on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And now, if we have Let's a look out. at our invocations. Come on. Come on. The suspense. <gasps> uh, it's still only that one. Maybe from before. refresh. From 1120. There's yeah, a refresh button. From Oh, there is. That's cool. Yeah, I think maybe also the logs pipeline kind of depending. It should be real time though, no? Real time logs. If you go to logs, see if there's anything there. Mm, oh, is there any uniqueness that. actually enforced? I think there's email uniqueness. So actually, the insert might have not worked. That's a good point. All right, so let's go and clear out what's in our context. Oh, Thor, you you might be a genius. Might well, be. many have said so, but I'm not sure <laughs> if it's true. <laughs> I'm surprised that, like, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm very impressed you remembered that. I just looked at the schema, and there is indeed a unique constraint right there. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think because I put it there. <laughs> <laughs> but still, to remember it, you're doing well. Well, the only thing well. is the front end doesn't surface the query errors. So that's maybe something we should, we should be fixing. Yeah, get on it. It's open source, folks, so if you all want to... <laughs> Get some contributions in on the Superbase community. All right. And let's see if we have... Uh, other page, I think. Whoops. Yeah. Uh, other, other page. <laughs> other page. Let's just well, make sure while it, we're on this page. The data? Did. Let's see. The data. Let's just refresh that. I'm working on an experimental uh, branch of Superbase because I work there. So yours will be much faster, much, much faster. <laughs> All right. So that's been inserted, which is good. So yeah, if we go, go over to, to database. Oh, this time log. actually go to the edge functions. That's Sorry, one remember. underneath database. Edge no, on the left. Yes, yes. Uh, we really need to get that rename done. Invocations. Come on. Show me some green love. So it's 11.25 here. Oh, we got some yeah. green. Damn. Cool. Can we get some emails, though? Well, shall I share my screen? Sure. <laughs> I can show you what the... Uh, how do I do this? Uh, it's giving it me tips. I'm not going to read the tips. Here we go. Share. No, don't read the tips. Just oh, share. never mind. It's I have to restart Chrome. <laughs> oh. Can Try you send a screenshot video. to John? I can Myers send a Slack. screenshot. Oh, that's but... a great idea. Perfect. Let's do this. Here we so go. People have told me I'm a genius. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Here we go. Sending to John via Slack. Hmm. <laughs> The moment of truth. It's it's spinning. It's uploading. Come on, Australian All internet. Right. <laughs> it's probably going Australia to US West, West Slack yeah, server no. somewhere, back to Australia. So, I'll just jump um, yeah. in the car, John, and hand deliver it. <laughs> <laughs> just print it out. Print it out, yeah. Processing file. 
cut. <laughs> I, I do not remember it being this long. Oh, man. <laughs> awesome. We'll get that soon. Oh, we've got something. I know oh, we're going to need oh, to stall. Oh. I just need a, a drum roll to display yeah. it without showing everything else. And, uh, and... Maybe download and preview or something. Have you got a drum roll for me? Well, we have. We I have, don't know if that uh, comes through the mic. <laughs> we have this. Why do I feel like this is going to haunt me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, we have a screenshot. So, no reply at alistair.dev. Um, so this is yep. a contact form submission, um, and it has all of the information of um, our person. Awesome. So now, what do we need to do to actually get them displaying on the page? We just insert into the table. And we probably can... This is something I should take a note. So let me actually take a note here. Uh, that I should have a seed script that you can run with the CLI to actually seed some partners, some mock partners. Well, actually, we'll probably we can just seed some real Superbase it's, partners because yeah, they are partners. publicly affiliated with Superbase. If they want or not, no, they do want. We we did ask them, in fact, uh, most of them, I think. And um, so CLI seed migration script. So I've taken a note. So I will do that uh, probably next week. Nice. So, so we're just entering this information. Yeah, let's manually. just enter it into the partner table manually for now. Right. So John's. Yeah, the imagery. only thing is uh, because the images and stuff, right? Like storage. Yeah, um, the uh, images. Yeah. Not going to be fun there. Yeah, so maybe, maybe we actually end here. <laughs> 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 We've we've already run quite significantly over. Um, I'm sorry about that. No, but I think just say, the... say it was a half, an hour and a half stream. You know, that's what we planned the whole time. Not, Did we tell you know, people we... it would only be an hour? We didn't we're tell people anything. Right. But it, I I scheduled it for you, and I'm just thinking of you as my uh, coworkers and oh, uh, that's, that's you very know, running a meeting though. thirty minutes over. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I'm assuming if we were to fill out all of these fields, um, is it are the images just a um, is the reason that's not fun because we don't. You have would have to upload to storage first, right? Because with next image, or could you just use any public image from the public web? As so, if you remember, we configured our next image uh, to only allow from our own storage. So we okay. we could use from. John, we'd have to add to that. Just upload your face in storage, you know, like you have your nice little icon. Yeah. And then let's just use that as all the images. Sure. And I mean, over and over again. That. Can we just yeah. do that on the on the live side as well? I didn't realize that we, was an option. Yeah. yeah, sure thing. Does this bucket need to be named a particular thing? Uh, just call just... it images and then make it public. Actually, Thor, can you make another note to include this yes. in the readme? Uh, yeah. And so for people watching. Oh, the storage setup. Wrong button, John. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, no, I was just going to say, just showing what I'm actually doing rather than just jumping through magic in oh, case nice, people nice. want to know what's up. We are um, over here on the left, we have storage. So this is a way that you can store files with Superbase. So um, similar to like an S3 bucket or something like that, or just Google Drive, um, a little block of storage where you can put files, so images or text files or uh, anything like that. Um, and so, yeah, if you come over to storage and then we're going to create a new bucket, we're going to call it images and we're going to make this one public. And then we say create bucket. And we now have this images bucket here and we can just drag and drop files directly uh, into the UI. And so I can grab a wonderful picture of my face. Uh, actually, I'm not sure I have the logo we might need to you have it on your website no oh uh, yeah yeah we could do that all right 
um, for you did actually schedule the meeting for an hour and a half. No, what I updated you it as we ran out. Oh, you updated it. <laughs> you might want to well, update you had it. Me <laughs> <laughs> That's my trick. So you update the meet meeting in Google, and then when it asks you, do you want to notify? The, just, the, no. The in you just know. You just no no update. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Don't tell them. All right. Uh, can I drag across? I love that. That worked though. <laughs> Oh yeah, no. Oh, an hour and a half. Scheduled it for ninety minutes. And... Yep. <laughs> you could even use that screenshot, John. I don't think it matters too much. We just need some yeah, images. Yeah, that's true. Cool. But I mean, I do like. I'm a little too vain for face. that. I want. Um, um, yeah. I'd like my face, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is John's hats after all. Uh, cool. So we now have this in our um, stored in we our need... superbase bucket so we could just copy the need something like this for tyler as well i think like japan really loves kind of anything sort of cutesy yeah uh, so maybe tyler can get like a a similar one how did you did you get your you, did you design your thor hammer uh well i commissioned it so I, I i did not design it myself but i earned the money that i paid to the artist <laughs> to make it <laughs> myself <laughs> good stuff all right, so if we have that URL, does that mean we could just, um, in our Superbase instance down here at images, yeah, could we just paste that URL? Is that what we're doing, Alistair? Just the public URL? I'm actually or... not sure how the dashboard handles um, arrays or JSON. So let's just try pasting it and oh, see Oh, images, yeah, sorry. It's just an array, just an array and then string. Uh, yeah. I think does right. it need to be single quote or does it not matter in no, uh I think uh it should be JSON, right? So double quotes. Okay. But uh, like the dashboard does some because I think in in normal Postgres land you do squiggly brackets, which is No, this is this is fine. I I I, I Yeah, I, no, 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 but that's what you... I'm saying. That the, the ah. dashboard does something different. So Right. All right, we got a slug of John's dash hats. The type is expert, the category is um... expert experts oh no sorry our oh, category you can do uh i think agency or you know depending what you, you can, are you can do anything you can uh, do anything i think it's yeah, free text. anything really it is free text best dev yeah <laughs> <laughs> that one all right yep In, yep that perfect that the category i think that's the correct category uh developer what would this be uh who developed you yeah so so it's just John, just put your name. This is more relevant for the integrations when, yeah. Cool. So John's hats. John's hats. Description. Uh, best hats around. Best super base hats around. Uh, and then our logo, would that be the same? You yeah, are? I think so. Just, just use the same. Um. You can put some markdown in there if you wanted to, but you know. Nice. Uh, website can be, uh, let's just go back to Superbase. You can do the same for docs. I think it's a URL as well. Hey, yeah, website. Okay. Let's use the website. I caught him. There he is. Hey. <laughs> Say hi. Hello. This, is, hey, this is the treat for, for anyone who made it to the end of the stream. You just, there you go. It was all worth it. Say hi, <laughs> yeah. This was all actually just cat stream. Can, can someone take a screenshot? <laughs> <laughs> uh. oh, hey. Okay, I'll let you go. Sorry. Sorry, Mace. Yes, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so this contact, do we we just want that to be index one, I guess? Or actually, we deleted a few, didn't we? So, so it's probably three or something. Three. Oops. Nope. Maybe one. Four. Oh, unlucky. No, I think it's four. Four. Oh, <laughs> oh no, 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 nearly. Nearly. Hey. Hey, that's it. Nice. Good job. All right. Uh, created that. Optional we fields. No, no, that's just uh, approved. True. True. And then that should be it. Give that a save. 
Nice. All righty. And now if we refresh our page here. And go to experts, I think it will be, because you put yourself in. We have John's hat. Look at that. That looks awesome. Nice. Yes. Well done. And then we click there. We can see all the important details here for the category. That one right there. Long category. (laughs) Very long category, uh, which we are the only one in. That's awesome. And these are very good. The best in definition is only unique. So, congrats. <laughs> Good stuff. This is, yeah, I guess by definition that means it is also worst DevRel. And, well, yeah. I'm going to create best test. Oh, damn. If there's no soup, what, what is the word in German? Superlativ. You can't, best is already the best. There's no uh, better than the best. Can't, can't be bester, bestest. Yeah. Anyway. Well, there you go. <laughs> I think uh, I think that's it. Any any yeah. last words? Anyone? Uh, this was fun, and we should most yeah. certainly do this again. Yeah, we should. So yeah, we're thinking of as I said at the start, we're gonna maybe do um, uh, like a weekly stream, maybe, and do uh, some afternoon. So at the moment, it's morning for all of us, um, which is why we're not nearly as fun as we would be if it was the afternoon for all of us. Um, and so if we did a stream in the afternoon, it would just be a, a straight up party. Um, Indeed. I think we should do it. We should do it. And I think by that time, there might even be kombucha at the WeWork. So. Wow. You are going to get really wild. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you don't have more right. than one kombucha. Yeah. It is fermented, right? So. Oh, careful. yeah. True, true. <laughs> I think at this point, we'll just... Uh, Go one last time, bobbing into uh, into John's level up tutorials. Wrap. Actually, we should. What's the link for? Let's send the link if anyone wants to learn some remix. Yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, Good time to to plug that for anyone yeah. still I think watching. Um, Leveluptutorials.com slash tutorials slash remix for that's not the one. That's the other one. one? That's Scott's one. Real-time um, remix with Supervice? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, if you want to learn some remix, which is very cool, uh, and you want to um, yeah, go a little bit deeper on Superbase, I recommend you check out this new course, so Real-Time Remix with Superbase, uh, where we go through from scratch building a real-time chat application. Um, and yeah, it's great. It goes all the way through creating an instance, creating a Remix application. You learn about loaders and actions and how to fetch data and write data. Uh, and then we go through a whole bunch of author authentication and authorization using row-level policies, which we mentioned earlier, uh, and then some real-time stuff. And there's a lot of... Um, yeah, I think the cool thing about this course is it's kind of like a complex example with Remix because it's so new. Um, there aren't uh, super deep examples yet everything's kind of um you know how to build a blog and how to build this thing and so uh yeah this was a way that we could take some quite complex state like a real-time chat application has a lot going on um and so yeah lots of synchronizing state across servers and clients and it's fun you should check it out and then and i think let's do one last plug for multiplayer.dev and yeah anyone who's on the live stream let's go over there and uh, do some chatting. So I think that's really cool. It's sort of um, showcasing some some f- uh, new real-time features we're working on. So in the top right, there is presence. So you know you probably used to this from the Google Docs, where it shows um, shows you like anyone who's currently viewing. Oh, so we actually have some people look- watching the live stream. I'm, I'm loving. This. Is that Alistair? Yeah, and Tyler probably. It is Alistair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is Thor lightning strike. Boom. Very cool. Yeah, this is fun. Um yeah. and so I think while while we play the bop and tune, we just hang out there. Awesome. Does that sound Thanks for good? watching, everyone. Thanks everyone. See you next time. See you guys. Yeah. Bye bye.
on my level up course and we're building with remix React's got a fresh coat of paint and a team sick Michael, Ryan, Chance, can see does It's like React router but with fancier mods I got my loaders and actions and now I'm ready to catch Whether client or server, no need to code from scratch Mash out a quick fix and push the patch You'll be yelling out next, it's time for a rematch So what about the data behind the scenes? You know it's gotta be green with hilarious memes Yo it's super base, DX the common theme Shipping faster than Google but with a fraction of the team Auth got it sorted, so easy you'll applaud it And when the data changes your back and we'll go report it in real time I'll tell you it's a beast, gotta see it to believe it So let's get released, peace